the real Canada, meaning it's on land. It is the actual land. That's why it's called the Crown Land Patent Grant. Yeah. And don't confuse and the, grant as in like them giving you permission. Grant is you're granting them access to issue a registered title to that to let public officers know what the fuck is up. So you are granting them jurisdiction to register that on their records to let their officers know that you are the rightful heir of that estate. That's why that's why uh, they give or that's why they are called the grant for one of the reasons. People need to distinguish that. Lawyers like to flip a lot of things around. Well, that's their job. Yeah, that's one of the jobs, yeah. Their job is to, uh, as another friend of mine coined the phrase, the entire read, the entire point of the law society is to pervert the course of justice, to obscure and to flip things around and to make things make make you believe uh, anything. Well, you know what, Dean? Ask a lawyer this. Ask any lawyer this. Who do you serve first, your client or the court? All of them will say the court. Of course. At a conflict of interest. That's uh, I just was talking about that last night with somebody actually because they uh, they fired their lawyer I guess and uh, the lawyer is trying to collect on five thousand bucks that they never earned and I said well I send just send them an affidavit saying that uh, I was not made aware that you were serving the court before me that exactly thank you that's actually an even a more that's an even more precise way of saying what I said I told I, it was more elongated I said it it, it I, I it's my understanding. That uh, you have a superseding oath to the law society that that supersedes your oath to me, and you didn't disclose that when we contracted together, which basically voids the contract ab initio. I'm not paying you. Yeah, and if you want to go back and correct all the things that the lawyers did, which most of the time they don't do fucking shit, they just argue like a fucking baby inside. Yeah, the they do nothing. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna reverse any of their processes. You put in a revocation of power of attorney, and you serve that on notice, and you let the court know that any and all proceedings, actions, or motions, or anything that was done in um, in, delinqu in delinquo, I can't remember what exactly what that stands for, but it pretty much means that in anything that was entrusted to my representative um, is, is re hereby revoked, null, and canceled. Due to the uh, due to um, negligence, not negligence, but due to the conflict of interest, and um, there's another word I used I can't remember. But fucking, <laughs> you get the point. You just you just go up and say, hey, you know, I was not made aware that this guy was serving your interests, not mine, or before mine. So I'm rescinding any and all action. And if they got a problem with that, you take it up in fucking yep. written notice. You're, just hey, saying, hey, you're, 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 you're revoking every, yeah, hey. you're revoking everything that guy did. I'm revoking all of it. Under because it was made under the uh, impre uh, under the actions of fraud, and anything so, done under fraud is rendered null and void in the yep. court of law. And that's also a breach of trust, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, very big. And you know, and to even add on to it, what you should do is you threaten them, saying, "Hey, if you proceed with this." I will see to it that your bar license is revoked for these actions. Yep. And I haven't done I haven't done much with going after the bar licenses yet, but I would like to. Because you know what? You get them where it hurts. You get them where the money's coming from. If you if you rob them or if you rob them of their job, they will smarten the fuck up. Or if you threaten them. Because you know what, the way I see it is, you take every if you take everything that a man has, man's got nothing to lose. That's when he becomes dangerous. But you threaten them, saying, "Hey, I will take this shit away from you if you persist." So I'm ceasing and desisting you from these actions and from my affairs. Once they have been served, cease and desist. They cannot proceed any further. If they do, then you can go after them for harassment and a whole bunch of fucking other shit. And also, you can take that and bring it to the bar license or to the bar association and saying, hey, look at what this guy is doing. He is malicing and he is intentionally causing harm to me. He is a breach. And if they don't do shit, 
Then you bring the whole fucking bar license into court and saying, hey, these motherfuckers still didn't fire this son of a bitch. Yep. Then you put the whole bitch fucking right on the fucking court. And it yeah, because, that, because it, it, is a, it is a public license to practice, so. Exactly. And if they're if they're in public breach or a breach of public affairs, then that's where the shit gets pretty nasty. Because you know what, I would fuck do. I would honestly love to bring the whole bar association against those claims because I know for a fact that they will do. They will not be able to do shit. And if you bring that to Supreme Court with the proper documentation, you have a chance to actually yeah. kick out all of the lawyers. See. The exclusion what, of uh, crowns. But what, what I think is interesting about this is if you go back 10 years, nobody was doing anything like this at all. And this is why government got so bad, because they just started getting away with anything. So they got worse and worse. The lawyers were getting worse and worse because nobody ever came back and did anything at all. The biggest thing we can do here in the next couple of months or half a year is to have a couple of hundred people around Canada that are educated enough to be able to go and file complaints with the law society and start going after lawyers' bon la uh, lawyers' licenses to practice and start going after the police and the government filing lawsuits. And even just that little bit would be enough to make them go, oh, shit. No, you don't even have to fucking bring them to civil court. Just sending them a complaint or notify saying, if you don't rectify this situation, the bar association will be brought. Yeah, All you gotta that, do is put that. This is shit. We don't want to fucking deal with this. Yeah, that's that's, that's called restoring the estate. I want you to restore the estate that you have damaged. Because exactly. if they do, if they don't, they've refused to provide remedy now, and that's a very serious crime. Yes. Okay. There was a small pause. Can I ask a question, or did you want to finish something? Ah, uh, good. We're done. We're done. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> I love it. Okay, um, I need. Uh, I have a friend here that says I need to chat with you guys. I have an issue upcoming, but I have no clue how to proceed. It's involving my child and the government wanting to contract with me to provide support to them rather than directly with my child. They are sending me papers requesting financial info. How do I proceed is my issue. Not sure if I provide my info to them, but right, I refuse to enter contract with them or question mark, question mark, question mark. Where? How does he proceed with this? Just, uh, just, uh, the, he's probably dealing with the CAS, right? Children's uh, Services and shit or some bullshit like that? Well, if it's not CAS, uh, if it's not um, facts like Family and Children children's Services, then it would maybe be just the government trying to get money for support. And I don't know if that's family and children's services or if that's actually um, Canadian Revenue Agency. I think okay. that would have something to do with that. Uh, no, I, I dealt with this one for my brother, actually, uh, out in Alberta. And normally it's uh, it's always like CFS or Child Family Services or All Nations Coordinated Family, family Child Services Network, which is what it is in Manitoba. Either way, when you get something from the court, like an order to appear or this and that, the whole nine yards... All you have to do is file up, uh, swear out an affidavit that you're that 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 you are you have not seen any information or be presented with any facts. You're under any obligation to contract with the courts regarding a private dispute. Exactly. And, then, you, send you, you and then send a motion to dismiss the case, and go and file that in the court record, and it will go away. And it did very very fucking quick. Okay, now I'd like, this isn't a trying to get anybody to shirk parental respons responsibilities. It's just not to not have to deal with it in a governmental means, but to deal with it. Um, Administratively, with privately, on your own, come to your own terms and get the government out of your life. In fact, if somebody has not even bothered to contact you at all in advance and their first action was just to go to court and sue you, okay, that's, that's tax fraud. And you can put that in your filing because they haven't even attempted to contact you and settle this dispute before taking it to a publicly funded court. That is tax fraud. And you should let all parties know that. Say, I'm not participating in tax fraud because this person has never even attempted to settle this dispute with me. Or raise the fact that there even is a dispute. So once they've administrated all their, their, their once they've exhausted their administrative remedies, then then we'll go to court. But until they contact me and try to and try to settle this matter peacefully first, I'm not going to be a party to tax fraud. You don't have my consent. Go away. 
that should be in a letter filed in the court. And that's very... I think everybody can understand the premise there. Okay, uh, I people, hope that answers the question. No, go ahead, Derek. People need to understand that, you know, when you're taking shit in your, your own hands, it's not hard. People no. need... Like, I need to stress this because it is not hard to go and file a criminal complaint. It is not hard to send in a demand for discovery. It is not hard to put in a motion to dismiss. Okay? It is not hard. You know you know how long it took for me for me to file for the criminal complaint? It took me twenty minutes. Now how long it took me to do the no, for the demand for the uh, discovery? It took me ten minutes. Wanna know how long it took me to craft up something like a motion to strike? It took me five minutes. Less than one hour you could be on your way from a nice paycheck. Yep. Or two okay, episodes of now Friends. The other <laughs> yeah, two episodes of freaking crap TV. But uh, a part of this question, um, he's letting us know that the ex is on disability and that they're going after him out of province. Okay. So there's a complete. I mean, there's a complete lack of jurisdiction. I don't know what her being on disability has to do with anything. I think he's just questioning. Yeah. If it does have anything to do with anything. No, not at all. Just uh, try, uh, you know, you, you don't allow the court's jurisdiction until the person's even tried to handle things in a peaceful manner first. Peaceful being privately, party to party. There's no one, there's no reason to, to, to involve a court until, until, uh, until a reasonable man can be shown that attempts at settling the dispute privately have failed. So okay. don't grant the court's jurisdiction. I do not give you jurisdiction in this matter. It's tax fraud to try to force me to do it because I have because this person hasn't even attempted to bring a dispute to me. Never mind me refuse settlement. This is the first time I've been. I'm just assuming maybe it's probably the first contact. I don't know, but the with everybody usually courts usually the first action being taken. That raises another point to do with summary convictions and criminal charges, right? Because everything's commerce, anyways. Um, why is it that the Crown, their first act is to get you into court to make a plea instead of trying to settle any alleged dispute outside of the court? So we've shut court like that down before just by raising that issue. If there's a dispute, why didn't you bring this to my attention before filing in court? That's tax fraud. They don't want to talk about that because now they would be they were finding themselves in dishonor. And if they bring that before the court, they would have to actually acknowledge that and have to actually make a try to actually honor or rectify that situation. So that's why they're hoping that you won't bring that up. If exactly. you bring that up, then they have to acknowledge it if you do it in the proper venues. Yep. But if you ignore it, they get to do they get to railroad you over. Exactly, because in every single presumption, every, every single claim that they're making, every single presumption they're operating on stands when you don't rebut any of the presumptions. The only way you can rebut them is to make, and that's why I raised, and that's why I developed that most simple argument you could ever possibly make, are you claiming I was performing a function of government at the time of the complaint? Mm -hmm. Because that destroys everything. And the only thing you ever can claim is that you weren't performing a function of government at the, at the time of the complaint. Now it's up to them to prove you were, and they cannot. It's done at that point. So... Yep. Okay, just a reminder, it is 2.22 on the 12th of August, 2011. You're listening to freethinkradio.com. This is Lifting the Veil with Carrie Lee. And again, I'm live with Dean Clifford and Derek Hill talking all things sovereignty. I would like to take it back a bit. Um, we'd like to mention that uh, there's a motion to shoot the prosecution in the face. I didn't say it. I'm just <laughs> reading it. Um, and uh, I would like to go back for the people that haven't heard and for some of the people that, uh, again, there might be a couple things missing in the uh, restream that I want to make sure get covered. And once again, that was the um, Officer Awareness Bulletin for Freeman on the Land that was put out August 3rd, 2011. That states that um, members of the free men of the land, I'll just read the beginning part because it's a brief description. Members of the free men of the land can present risk to officer safety officers, officers are urged to exercise caution in dealing with known or suspected members of the free men of the land. The FOTL is a libertarian and anti government movement whose members believe they <laughs> are sovereign. How dare they? It sounds like we're Al Qaeda in Afghanistan or something. 
It really does. Hey, you know what? That's cool, man, because you know what? They still haven't shown proof that Al-Qaeda did what they did. Yeah.